Hi, my name is Jasmine, and today we're going to go over a lead code problem called Jump Game 2, which is a variation of Jump Game 1, slightly different, and it's been asked by many big tech companies such as Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft, and Adobe. So a pretty important question. Uh, with that being said, let's go over the, the problem description. Given an area of non-negative integers called nums, you are initially positioned at the first index of the array. Each element in the array represents your maximum jump length at that position. So basically, if you're here um, at the first uh, index um, and you want to jump to um, another index, the options you have is uh, jump with a length of 1 or 2 or with a length of 3. That's the maximum you can reach. So, um, our goal is to reach the last index um, in the minimum number of jumps. So you're going to start from here, the index 0, and you want to go to the last index uh, with the minimum number of jumps. You can always assume um, that you can reach the last index. And there are a couple constraints here. So um, how do we go about this problem? Let's actually solve this example with intuition and um, then propose um, algorithms for this. Um, first thing I want to do here um, is, well, obviously we start with from index 0. Now we have options. Um, let's say we want to take a route. Um, I start from here. I want to go here. And um, we have the option to jump with the length of 4. Let's say I want to jump with the length of 4. So I reach the number 3 here, 1, 2, 3, 4. And what else can I do? Um, I can jump with the length of maximum 2 because I reach the um, last index. So the number of uh, jumps for this one is 3. Now let's see if I can find a better... Um, actually a better way um, may, let's see if like three is the minimum number of jumps or not so for that um, I would say um, let's say we go from three to two one two three two and then from two we go to one uh, we choose the length of one and then from one we can only go with a length of one to three and then after that, well, we can go with a length of two, but the min, uh, but the number of jumps um, reaches to four from three. So this is not the minimum anymore. Now, if you try um, different uh, routes, uh, you realize that uh, the minimum number of jumps for this particular example is three. So min jumps here is three. But, um, how do we solve this? Like, what kind of algorithms do we use to s approach this problem? Now, there are a couple of methods, uh, mainly two methods. Um, one approach is um, dynamic programming um, with the time complexity, complexity of O n squared. And the other one is the greedy method, um, which is the focus of this video. I'll be briefly explaining the dynamic programming approach, but this is the focus of the video uh, because it has a time complexity of O n. Uh, of o -N. So much better approach. Um, and it's much more simpler. So let's actually get to the algorithm section uh, and let me explain to you how we solve this problem. As we've discussed in the previous section, one of the approaches to solving this problem is through dynamic programming. And in this method, um, we need two arrays. One is the original array that contains all of our inputs, and the other one is called minjump. Basically, this array um, stores the minimum number of jumps from each of these indexes to the end of the array. So for example, if we start from the end of the original array, how many jumps until we get to the end of it? Well, obviously zero jumps. So um, we move on to the other one. Now, uh, we can use the dynamic programming approach to fill this um, 
array. And um, the, uh, the way we do that is we consider the value of the um, index that we're in in the original array, which is, for example, here 2. And in the min jump array, we examine the last two um, indexes that we've filled. So, for example, the last two indexes in this min jump array is only 0. We don't have any other index, so we only have to consider the 0. So um, when we find the minimum of all of those um, uh, indexes, uh, we add one to it and fill it in the min jump array. So we add one to this one and we fill it in just like that. So we move on to the um, next um, index in the original array. So we have to consider um, the um, last three indexes in the min jump array and find the minimum of them, um, which we only have two and the minimum is still zero. So we fill that in. Uh, we uh, increment it by one and fill it in in the um, same spot in the min jump array. And we continue this. Uh, and for example, let's say here. Um, here, we only have to consider um, one index, one previous index, which is one in the min jump array. And the minimum of it is obviously one because we only have one index. Um, so we increment it by one and here we have two. So we can fill this table with the same method. And this is our final result. Now, what do we do with this table? What do we do with this array? Um, the reason we fill this array is that in, in the dynamic approach, we start from the, after we fill this um, array, we go back to the um, beginning of the original array, and then we say, okay, um, how we want to find the minimum number of jumps. So um, we, for example, examine the, um, when we're here, we look at the value of the index in the original array, which is three in here. And then we examine the um, next three indexes in the min jump array and um, again find the minimum of the um, three in uh, this min jump array, which is we have two twos. Uh, we can choose either of them. Um, it won't make a difference in our final answer. So I'm going to go with the first two. And then uh, in the original array, we jump to the same location uh, that the two um, is in the min jump array. So for example, like this, we jump to four. Now, um, when we're at <clears throat> position uh, one in the um, original array, we c the value is four. So we consider the next four um, elements, which are uh, three, two, two, one. Obviously, the one is the minimum, so we have to jump to this index and in the, the same index in the original array. And we repeat that. So we have three. Um, obviously, we only have two left, two indexes left. So between these two, zero, um, which is the last index, is the minimum. So we jump to that. And the minimum number of jumps is three. Now, what if I chose? What if I had chosen the um, this two instead of the first two? It wouldn't make a difference. The only difference is that these would be the sequence of our jumps, uh, which is still the same. Like um, we have three minimum number. Uh, our minimum number of jumps is still three. Only um, the way we get to that three is a bit different but you know, still the same answer. Now, the time complexity for this algorithm is O of n squared because we have um, two arrays and we loop over them. Um, and uh, the space complexity is O of one because we have to create another, an additional array for min jump. So this is why um, I've discussed maybe the greedy method is a bit better in terms of time complexity, space complexity. So um, let's actually uh, review the greedy method in the next section. Let's examine the greedy method for this problem. Um, this is the main method we're going to be um, going over and um, the code is based on this method. So 
What do we need for the greeting method? Obviously, we need the array, and we need three indexes. Uh, one is current end index, which indicates the end of our search area, which I'll touch on in a little bit. And another one is furthest jump index, which is uh, which shows based on the value of our index three here, how uh, far can this jump go? Like here, the farthest we can go is to um, this index, and we have another um, index, or I should say. Uh, another arrow or pointer pointing to the um, current index that we're in. Now, this is the search area we have. The search area we're, we'll be looping over, and I'll explain what it is. Um, and we have a variable called search area updated, which every time the length of the um, search area um, gets updated, we also update this value. Now, this is important because it also indicates the minimum um, amount of a minimum number of jumps that uh, we need to do to get to the end of the array. So let's start. Uh, first, all these three arrows pointing at the same um, index, which is the beginning index, zero. And then uh, because um, the furthest jump index, uh, based on the value of three, uh, can be updated to here, we update that um, the position of the furthest jump index. And since the um, current index that we're in and the current end in index are equal, meaning that we've reached the end of the um, search area, we need to also update our current end index uh, to the same value as the furthest jump index. So like this and our search area expands and so does the value of um, our search area updated variable gets updated. And um, we also move the current index by one. And uh, here we, th uh, we see uh, what, how far can we go from here. So the furthest jump is four. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, we can update the value of furthest jump because it's greater than the current furthest jump. And we can actually go here. And then um, since we there's still uh, some, uh, we haven't still reach, reached the end of the search area, we keep uh, going, moving forward. And uh, we come across to this value. Um, and so we see what's the furthest jump from here. Uh, well, the furthest jump takes us to this place, um, which is the same place as current index, but this um, index is smaller than our current furthest jump index, so we don't update it. Um, and we keep going. So here, the furthest jump index um, takes us to the same place as our current furthest jump index, so we don't update the value either here. Um, and since the um, the current index also in uh, current end index point to the same um, index, meaning that we've reached the end of the search area, we have to also update the current end index. So we update it and we update the value of these uh, this variable. So and we keep the algorithm going. Um, here we don't have to update the furthest jump index because it doesn't change. Um, the m maximum length of our jump is one. Um, and we're here. So the furthest jump index actually takes us to the end of our array. Um, so we update the value. And um, the current end index, um, the current end index and our current index, also point to the same uh, value to the same position. So we also update these uh, the the, uh, the position of current and index, um, and we also update the value of our search area updated. So so far we have uh, we updated the search area three times, the length of our search area three times, and our current end index reaches the end of our array meaning that we have to halt uh, the algorithm. Um, this is the general greedy method. 
and it gave us the minimum jump of three. Um, so let's go about implementing this in code. So this is the Java implementation of this algorithm. Uh, first, we check the special cases in the case that the um, uh, array itself is empty or the length of it is zero, we return uh, minus one, which essentially like no jumps. Um, or if we have the length of one, we only need, we, we don't need any jumps, we return zero. Now we have um, the uh, three variables we've explained in the previous section, farthest jump index, current end index, and um, jumps, which uh, in, uh, is the same as the search area of data variable in the previous section. Now we loop over the algorithm, uh, the array itself, um, and uh, the furthest jump index gets updated every time, and the value of it is the maximum value uh, between the current furthest jump index value and the value of the index um, i plus nums i. Basically, uh, it compares the current value of um, uh, the furthest jump index with um, the uh, value of it if um, we jump with the length of like, for example, three in the beginning. Um, so it's essentially that we've explained it in the previous section. And um, there is the um, current end index. If, uh, if we reach a place where the current index um, i equals the current end index, we reach the end of our search area, we um, increase the number of jumps by one, and we also have to update the current end index with the same value as for this jump index, as we explained. And uh, once we've reached the end of the array, uh, we return the number of jumps. Um, otherwise, we return minus one. If there's any other case, we return minus one. Now let's run the code and see if we can submit it. It was successfully submitted. And um, let's talk about time complexity. The time complexity for this algorithm is O of n because of the for loop we have here. And um, the space complexity is of O of 1 uh, because we don't have, except for a couple variables here, we don't need any sort of like array to store any data. That's why it's the most um, efficient algorithm for this problem. I hope you enjoyed this video and um, learned something, hopefully, and I'll see you in the next one.